Well, good evening. It's once again time for Parish Prayers and Beyond. And you noticed I've gone beyond. Uh, I'm out of uh, the building out here in this beautiful weather. Uh, just really enjoying this. Uh, and it's good to see you. Uh, I hope that you're able to make it outside and just enjoy some fresh air. Amen. We thank God for this fresh air. Listen, you can even hear the birds. I love it. It's good to be here with you on this uh, evening, this Wednesday evening. Uh, last week, we talked about a characteristic of Christ. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing on Wednesday evenings, looking at different characteristics of Jesus. Last week, we looked at being kind. This week, I want to look at compassion. Compassion. Uh, what is compassion? We really need to ask that question, don't we? Uh, we need to answer it. <laughs> so let me answer it for you. Compassion has been defined as something that motivates people to go out of their way to help the physical, mental, or emotional pains of another and themselves. Jesus had compassion. He never looked away from people. He, he always looked upon them and had compassion. Listen to this from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew says uh, that, it's, he said, seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus, when he saw this crowd, he saw needs. Whenever people were around him, Jesus understood their real needs and he sought to address those needs. For some, physical healing was necessary. Uh, for others, the root issue was spiritual. In fact, the root issue is always spiritual. Uh, but sometimes there were other needs uh, that needed to be attended to. But Jesus was sensitive to those needs. He had compassion. Uh, in all cases, though, Jesus took the time to actually notice that people were hurting. And his compassion drove him to help them. For us, we cannot always see on the outside, just looking at people, that they have a need. We can't just look at them and discover their need. Since that is mostly true, how do we find out if someone has a need? Well, you guessed it. We're going to have to engage them. We're going to have to engage them in conversation. We're going to have to stop what we're doing and interact with them. That's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to observe them, see if they have a need. At this point in time, we may have to just call someone on the telephone. Uh, during, you know, this COVID and all this mess, we may just have to call someone. Call them on the telephone and ask, oh, how are you doing? How are things going? Are you okay? Not just asking as a neighbor, but asking as a true friend, are you okay? Seek to listen for the needs. Maybe someone just wants to talk. Wait, listen, <laughs> let them talk. Maybe that's what they need to do is to get all of it off, off their chest, just to, just to get it out. Maybe they need a listening ear. Maybe you can be that ear, that ear with compassion. So listen, engage yourself. I'm not suggesting we get up in everyone's business and get real nosy about what's going on in their lives. Uh, but when we are an aware of needs in people's lives, we need to turn on that switch of compassion and seek to meet that need. Listen, it's a characteristic of Christ. It's something that God has given to us. When he poured his love into our hearts, this is one of those characteristics that came with his love. And so we have compassion. It's there. It's there. Uh, we need to use it in meeting people's needs for some of us, it's one of the most natural acts that we can even that we could ever participate in, just to help someone, just to meet a need. That's you know, it's it's something that it's not hard, uh, something we can some of us can just do at the drop of a hat. But for others, it's well, if we're brutally honest, it's kind of scary. And if we are brutally honest, I, I tell you, some of us are thinking, well, if we are compassionate towards someone, we might get taken in by them. And so it's probably easier just not to have compassion because, you know, there's so many people trying to take advantage of others. And so it's just easier not to do anything. 
Listen, God has planted in our hearts the seed of compassion and we need to let it grow. It's okay. It's okay. It's necessary that we, God's children, meet people's needs. I don't think that any of us are in danger of having too much compassion. On the other hand, we're probably in danger of not using much compassion. Something to think about. Is that an oh me or oh my? Kind of smarts. Back to the verse. It says, seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. It does not say seeing those whom he knew, those who believed like he did, those who were nice and kind, those who were politically aligned as he might be, those who ate what he ate or those who wore what he wore. It doesn't say those things. It simply says seeing the people. He looked past all of those things. He saw the people and he saw them in need. He did not discriminate. He saw them, that they were in need, and he had compassion on them. It's as simple as that. You and I as children of God should take the hint from Jesus and use that compassion that he's poured into our hearts without fear, without fear. Oh, but somebody's gonna take advantage. No, use the compassion. God has given it to us to use, not to hold on to ourselves and just say, oh, well, we have compassion for people. We give, we give money to ministries. No, God wants us to meet needs. And sometimes those needs are going to take our time and they're going to be risky. But God calls on us to use our compassion. When we do, when we do use our compassion, I think we will find that it was the right thing to do. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. And I thank you for the way you love us. I thank you for loving people who do not love you. I thank you for loving people who do not believe in you. I thank you for loving people that are not like us. And God, teach us to do the same. Teach us to love those who are not like us. Teach us to love those who do not love you. Teach us to have the compassion that we need on those who are in need. Help us not to discriminate. Help us to open up our hearts and meet the need. Father, we pray for those who are under the weather with whatever they have. Father, those who have the COVID, God, we pray that you bring healing to them. Those who have other illnesses, God, bring healing and comfort to them. Father, those who have had issues, uh, procedures, or surgeries, God, we pray that you bring them healing and comfort. And Father, meet those needs. Speak to those hearts and those minds, Father. We thank you, God, for being a God who cares for us, for being a God who says to us through the cross that we matter to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Again, it's good to be with you on these Wednesday evenings as we look at the characteristics of Christ. I hope that you'll join us next week, this same time, same place. Remember, we have some announcements coming up and we have a little time of prayer that you can join us in. Uh, there'll be some music and a little guiding prayer time and you can join us in that. And then following some announcements. Remember, people are watching you. They're wanting to find Christ. The question is, will they find him in you? My prayer, my hope is, yes, they will. Remember, you matter to God and to us right here at the First Baptist Church of Winsboro.